Howdy, this is Michael Goldstein, a.k.a. Bitstein. And I'm Gary Leland, and you're listening to episode 97 of the Crypto Cousins podcast. Feed your interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies by joining Hall of Fame podcaster Gary Leland on the Crypto Cousins podcast. And remember, we are all cousins in the world of crypto. This week's price of Bitcoin. $7,976. That's down $707 or 8.2% over the last seven days. Howdy, 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 howdy. Michael, we give Texans four howdies here. Everybody else only gets three. Oh, I'm, I'm quite honored. <laughs> yeah, yes. Jimmy, Jimmy asked for his fourth. I forgot on Jimmy's song. He said, hey, don't I get four howdies? I'm from Texas. <laughs> well, and I'm honored to be on the show now for a third time. And you're my first person to give me a howdy back before I gave him a howdy. I, I mean, I'm really from Texas. Well, you know, I've been here since I was 28 and I'm 64, getting ready to turn 65. And my kids, when I had been here 56 years or whatever, half my life, they threw a party and said that I was officially a Texan, that the rule was if you'd been here more than half your life. So I'm, I'm going by that. You know, you haven't been here in quite a while, uh, since episode 72. How's the carnivore uh, diet going? It's great as always. Still have had no desire to ever eat a plant again. You know, I see more and more people, um, well, Safe, of course, as always, you know, talking about his talk at Bitblock Boom is uh, about the, how the government ruined your food with Fiat food, and he's having a, a, a cookout, I think, Saturday night. But I see Tone Vase doing... Uh, Steak uh, nights now, carnivore nights now. This catching on, becoming a thing. Yeah, well, you know, it sounds crazy until you try it, <laughs> and then once uh, once people try it, they they find out that uh, uh, Safe and I were onto something. How do you think this has started? The, the, do you think you and Safe started this as being kind of a Bitcoin deal in, in the Bitcoin space? Uh, yeah, no, I mean it was definitely us. Uh, yeah, we, we we were pushing this, uh, and uh, a lot of the the wider media cycle kind of started with me as well because, uh, or both of us, because they were quoting our our tweets and some you know media outlets because it was the wider world has enough trouble making sense of Bitcoin. It certainly does not have an easy time understanding something like people who only eat all meat. So then when you see a niche group in that niche group that does both, they can't look away. <laughs> uh, and so they, they had to, to write about us. And I think that helped fuel a lot of the kind of wider recognition of it. Although there's also some great carnivores who are not in the Bitcoin community who are, you know, really doing a good job spreading the word. Shout out to, you know, people like Sean Baker. Well, I'm studying heavily switching to becoming a carnivore. You know, I, I basically did it once when I was much younger. I went on a no carbohydrate diet for a long time. So basically, I pretty much ate all meat. So I, I know I could do it. But I liked your Twitter post. I think it was your Twitter post I saw the other day about, I think someone basically said they were going to uh, just eat carbs once in a while. And you said, carbs are addictive. You can't eat carbs once in a while. <laughs> you have to go cold turkey. I don't remember if that was me, uh, but I do think that there's there's something to that. There's also the thing is like, you know, when, once you do this for a while, you know, people ask me all the time if I'm going to, you know, if I eat a cheat meal or something like that. And what they have trouble understanding is it, it does not cross my mind at all. I have no cravings. In fact, I was just telling someone how when I first started doing this, you know, you go into you know, H-E-B or something, and you go by the pastries, and the smell hits you, and you're just like craving, you know, a donut or something. And then over time, it came to be that, you know, I had absolutely no craving for the donut, and it was just a smell that was, you know, it was it was a nice smell, you know, it brings up nice memories or whatever. Now, if I walk into an H-E-B and I walk by the pastries, the smell is just like overwhelming. And I'm just like, you know, wondering if someone could turn it down a little. Uh, so the the actual like desire, like, I don't I don't even have a, a want of eating carbs every once in a while. Um, it simply does not register to me as food. Right, right. That makes yes. You know, it's it's kind of like to a degree. I used to drink a lot of diet soft drinks, maybe mm -hmm. ten a day. I mean a ton, and yeah. I quit cold turkey and quit drinking sodas altogether. And about eight months later, I was at an event and they had no water. They had nothing to drink. 
And I said, well, gosh, I guess I'm going to drink a diet soda just because I'm dying here. And I was kind of worried about drinking it even because I was so addicted before. And I took that first sip, and I was like, oh, my God, this is terrible. How did I drink this for years? I've I've had times where I've like, you know, eaten a mint or something like that. And like 10 seconds in, I have to spit it out because it was just like it, it's too sweet, which is ironic. Like when I was a kid, you know, I'd hear my grandma say things like, oh, this food is too sweet. And as a kid, you know, I'm like, I, those words make no sense to me. How like that saying something is too sweet. There's no such thing. Uh, but now that I've I've been without it, even, you know, even a mint is just like too much. Right. Well, maybe we should get on to the more to the topic here instead of talking about our dietary plans. Well, it's not um, completely off topic. <laughs> well, that's what you say. That's what makes them listen, you said. Hey, tell us just real quick in a paragraph or two, sentence or two about yourself real quick for anyone who may not be familiar with you, except that they do know you like to eat meat. <laughs> well, so, uh, you know, I'm Michael Goldstein. I am the co-founder and president of the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute, which is a website dedicated to you know, curating, uh, you know, cypherpunk literature and the, the history of Bitcoin, the public writings of Satoshi and some economic analysis of Bitcoin. And I'm also the co-host of the noted Bitcoin podcast with Pierre Rochard, where we talk about all kinds of technical issues and, uh, some economic stuff, some, you know, just bantering and having fun. Well, that's a great podcast. Well, thank you. Uh, that's, that's sort of, uh, yeah, that's my place in the Bitcoin world. That's why I try to listen to that podcast when I'm trying to become more technically advanced. Some of the guests we have on, like, they, you feel so dumb after talking, after, like, you know, listening to them talk uh, because you realize just how little you know about Bitcoin. And it's, it's a fantastic feeling. It's not, it's not like a, a bad feeling. It's actually quite the opposite because it inspires you just to want to know, like, to go uncover those secrets that they've found. Um, so sometimes you got to listen to an episode more than once to even glean some of what they're saying because there's so much, you know, in incredible stuff going on in the Bitcoin world. It's kind of like watching a movie. You, know, you watch a movie one time and it's a, re a really good movie and you watch it. Then the second time you watch it, you don't have to keep up with the plot. So now you're seeing all this other stuff happening. Exactly. Yes. And, and you go, oh, I didn't even see that the first time. Or so it'd be the same way. You didn't hear it the first time. Um, how did you originally learn about Bitcoin? I don't think I've ever asked you that. Um, I originally learned it from, uh, you know, a, a co-founder and former uh, member of the Sochitoshi Nakamoto Institute, uh, Daniel Krawitz, in 2011 uh, during the Mt. Gox bubble. Yeah, that, that was when I first heard about it. So that was, it was like, you know, on its way up from a dollar to thirty dollars or so. And then it kind of came to my attention again sometime in 2012 when there was all the Silk Road media blitz through Gawker and, and Chuck Schumer and all of that. Um, and then finally, like what kickstarted my actual obsession was listening to Cody Wilson of Defense Distributed talk about Bitcoin in relation to sending digital weapons over the Internet. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Yeah, speaking... Rather physical weapons over the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, matter of fact, speaking of Cody, he was the wine sponsor, I believe, last year. At the Satoshi Nakamoto dinner, yeah, yeah, so that was kind of cool. Speaking also of Silk Road, uh, just for the listeners out there, I'm getting ready to come out with the um, Railroaded podcast. I don't know, have you listened to the Railroaded series? I, I haven't. It's w very well done. I can't believe how well it, they did it. And Lynn, had, well, Ross's mom, Lynn, has sent me the episodes, and we're going to put them on a podcast feed so people can find them on iTunes. Oh, and fantastic. so we're just going to uh, put those up there as uh, I think it's going to be eight episodes, the full railroaded podcast. So, um, yeah. yeah, free Ross. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, OK, let's get into what we really wanted to talk about today. I want to talk about the dinner. For those who don't know, if you listen to the show, you know, I host BitBlock Boom. This is the second year. And really, I host it with a lot of friends help like you, you guys and Safe and everybody. And it's kind of like a, a group project there. And it's in Dallas, Texas, August 17th and 18th. This will be our second year. And it's a great event. Now, on Friday nights, last year and this year also, we have the Satoshi Nakamoto Dinner. That's the correct name, right? Yeah, the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute Annual Dinner. And, and uh, it's a carnivore dinner, in case you don't know. But you did have mushrooms there last year. 
Hey, you know, I I wasn't eating those. That's because <laughs> okay. the, the, the restaurant has those things. Uh, they were I'm good not, mushrooms. I'm not there to encourage. That's they good were... to hear. You know, I'm, I, I want people to be happy. Uh, but obviously, we're going to focus on feeding our guests quality food. And it was quality food. Why don't you tell us, um, let's talk about the dinner. Uh, I don't know if we should talk about how great last year was. We, or start with uh, this year. Let's start with this year. What do we got going on this year here? Yeah, so uh, this year I'm working on securing a location. We're doing things a little bit differently this year. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing like a great, you know, Texas barbecue dinner, which will, will be a little more informal than last year's dinner, which was at a, a sort of fancier uh, steakhouse. Real fancy. Yeah. Not kind of fancy. It was a nice It was, it was fancy, yeah. But at the same time, you know, uh, so many people come from outside of Texas I almost want to say like half the people were not from Texas. I think more than half the people were not from More Texas. than half, yeah. You know, so, I have more people coming to, to, not interrupt, but there are more people coming to Bitblock Boom from New York oh, wow. than there is Texas. Yeah, well, so with that in mind, uh, you know, I want to be able to give some uh, good Texas hospitality. And uh, because of that, you know, everyone everyone comes to Texas for the barbecue. So that's what I want to give them. So we're, I'm working on uh, securing the location at a... Uh, at a barbecue joint in, in Dallas that a, a friend speaks highly of. Oh. So that'll be it. We'll be dining on good brisket and sausage and all of that. And tied into last year. Last year was so much fun. We had about, I think, 82 people uh, crammed into this uh, steakhouse. And the thing about Bitcoin is, despite you know what recent you know Twitter drama might suggest, you know everyone is just like best friends as soon as they meet. And so it's just a, a night of, you know, wonderful camaraderie and good food. Well, you know, it's really kind of a unique experience if you are a lover of Bitcoin because you're in a room with people who love Bitcoin. Right. And you're not just it's not like a regular meetup where you're all sitting at a table, you know, and you're kind of talking this one. Everybody's having a great time. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. as the night goes on. The better the time, because that wine never ended. <laughs> I had to leave at 10, or I knew I wouldn't be able to drive back. I made a mistake and drove my car. So uh, I should, next time I'm catching an Uber, just in case. But it was great having uh, a place where everybody was on page with the same thing. Absolutely. I mean, we do uh, strict KYC, know your coiner. Uh, I mean, the unfortunate thing is we can't. We, we have limits as to how many people we can host. So unfortunately, I mean, we'll have to see how it works out. We'll see how many people we're able to get in there. Is the seating going to be as this for this, is the same amount this year, or is it going to be less? Is it's it's going to be about the same. Okay. But I, I also like I haven't checked the latest on how many people have uh, signed up, like you know, to uh, apply. And uh, but we you know we make sure that uh, people aren't you know there's no shit coiners. Yeah, this is the application process just to have the right to pay money to go eat dinner there. Right, exactly. Because, you know, we want good conversation. We don't want things to get caught up in having to sit around and argue the merits of Bitcoin versus everything else. We want to get together as Bitcoiners and have fun as Bitcoiners. And I think that just increases the quality of the event way more. Now, where do people go? Because I can't remember the website to sign up or apply. Yeah, you can sign up at uh, nakamotoinstitute.org slash events. And like I said, so we're going to be, you know, securing the location very soon, hopefully this week. Um, and once we do that, we can, you know, start going through the process of getting people like actually signed up so they can send in money for the event and, and reserve their seats and also start making, you know, any kind of travel plans. So I guess they'll get an email if they're approved saying, hey, come on and Here's where you go to uh, finish your uh, processing. Yes, exactly. Well, that's uh, pretty exciting stuff. And then the party is going to be exciting. I met so many new friends last year. I was looking at a poll Jimmy Song put on Twitter. I think he's starting to do a poll every Friday. Yeah. And it was, how many friends have you made in Bitcoin? None, one, 10 to 12, more than 12. And I, had, I was going, gosh, I made more than 12 friends just at that one event that night. Right, I think I, I took that poll. I think the one of them was like 21 plus. May yeah, have been like the, the last. And I was totally in that cohort because, like I said, I mean the the great thing about Bitcoin, in my opinion, 
um, with regards to this kind of thing is there's all kinds of different subcultures within Bitcoin, like carnivores and stuff like that. But generally speaking, Bitcoin comes from the sort of, uh, you know, a libertarian mindset. And with that, there's just so many different things that kind of overlap for Bitcoiners. And I think it has to do with just being generally questioning of, of various authorities. And so because of that, you you get people who, if you're able to question the Federal Reserve, uh, you're also going to be able to question things like the public education system or the dietary system or whatever else. And so because of that, uh, filtering for Bitcoiners tends to also filter for all these other things. And it just makes it that much easier to immediately become friends with someone because, you know, you start discussing ideas for, hey, let's go build this thing or that thing. And you don't have as many hurdles, so to speak, socially that you have to cross of like figuring out the other person. And also you get a lot of clever uh, marketing ideas, I'll have to say. Like I saw one guy giving away one billion dollar or one million dollar Zimbabwe dollar bills. Oh, with yeah, his uh, yeah. website address stamped on the back. That was his calling card. Yeah, I remember that. Those million dollar bills were cheaper than a business card. So, and everybody keeps those. Yeah, I remember there was a picture somewhere of me on Twitter of going full billionaire mode because I was holding the Zimbabwean billion dollars. Yeah, and then someone else was giving away bitcoins with their logo on the back or something, the, the physical coins, you know, replica coins. So you get a lot, of, there's a lot of stuff happening there. So I'm going to highly recommend everybody what was the site again they go to? NakamotoInstitute.org slash events. Okay, go there. Sign up. Don't bother signing up, though, if you're um, a Litecoin guy or a Ripple guy. You're probably not going to get going. Your online profile will quickly reveal your, yourself. So. Yeah, so don't even bother. One thing I do want to say is that, uh, like I said, you know, unfortunately, we do have a, a cap on how many people we can allow just because of the, the amount of space. We have a barbecue size limit. So that being said, there's so much going on this that weekend that, for one, Given you're not a shit coiner, uh, don't take it personally if, unfortunately, someone got to your seat first. But you should still definitely come to Dallas that weekend because there's just so much stuff going on uh, that missing just one dinner, that's just one tiny part of a bigger thing. You know, there's going to be all the stuff on Thursday uh, with the barbells and bitcoins and another dinner. Pierre is doing his lightning workshop on, on Friday. There's the conference on Saturday. There's the cookout on Saturday. I think someone was trying to coordinate uh, a trip to the shooting range on Sunday. They're working on that now. I haven't been able to put that on the site yet because they don't have it quite finished. But you also have Tone Vases coming Friday and doing a session. Right. Yeah. So the, the dinner is just one aspect of it. So uh, don't let that be the uh, sole basis of your travel plans. And we also have, which is kind of limited, like the dinner, we have the Bitcoin brunch Sunday which yes. is also limited, and that's close to selling out. It's amazing how last year when we did the event, we were like having to sell tickets during the event to the brunch. My wife was walking around selling tickets to the brunch during the Saturday event because we were scared we were not going to have enough to meet our minimum. And now we're getting ready to have to cut it off soon because it seems like 7 out of 10 people are buying it with the brunch. The brunch was so much fun last year. It was the best part, I thought. Yeah, it was just, it was super chill. There was the, I mean, I, I guess we won't have the World Cup going on this time. It was right during the, the finals of the World Cup last year, which, good way to hang out with Safe. And Safe said the only way he would come is if the TV had World Cup on it. With Thankfully, him. every single TV had it on, so. <laughs> so that will be perfect this year. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And like I said, I hope they get that, that bullets and Bitcoin going on, because a lot of people, when they come to Texas, have never shot a gun before in their life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to people who've never even held a gun before, much less shot one. So I think that's a pretty cool experience. Yeah. Well, and I think it's uh, important for every Bitcoiner to learn, you know, advanced techniques in pr protecting their private keys. So <laughs> you should definitely come and, and, and learn those kinds of skills. Now, definitely. You need to shoot a gun. You need to know basic gun safety. You know, whether you have a gun or not, in case you ever pick up one, you know what to do with it. And while we're talking about, since we're on the subject, I want to make sure everybody knows, this event, um, where the brunt, the dinner is on Friday the 16th, mm -hmm. the block boom is on the 17th, and the brunch is on the 18th. 
Uh, Safe at Eames doing his event this night of the 17th. Bitcoin and Barbells is the 15th. Tone Base is the 16th. So there's a lot of stuff going on around there, and they're all on the site with links to them. If you go to bitblockboom.com and just click on schedule, I have everybody who's making something who's kind of like our peeps, their stuff gets on the site there. Someone's trying to make an event around ours and they aren't a peep, their stuff doesn't get on the site there as a schedule. But I want everybody who's doing something and everybody who comes here to have a great time. I'm not worried about one. I want everybody who's doing something to make this weekend like a really big event to have say, gosh, my thing was packed. My thing was sold out. I couldn't get any more people in here. I mean, Bitcoin and barbells is like five bucks, I think. You know, he's just trying to cover his gym time. I think he had to put it was I think it was originally free, but he kind of had to put a price on just because of the uh, overwhelming uh, excitement um, and that I'm excited about that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be I do another conference. I've got a hectic week. I do another conference that starts Monday in Orlando podcast movement. And so I fly in Thursday, <laughs> Thursday morning. So I make it just in time for Bitcoin and barbells. I also want to make sure to let everybody know if you go to bitblockboom.com and you use the code SNI for Satoshi Nakamoto Institute, you'll save 30% off the price of your ticket. So make sure you remember of that code for 30% off the price of your ticket. And you cannot go to the brunch by itself. That's only for people who are going to Bitblock Boom. Hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, I'm kind of getting off the Bitblock Boom and the dinner and stuff. Do you run the lightning node? I do. I don't know if it's currently operable. I don't. I, I. I don't maintain a lot of channels, and the channels I keep are with people I trust. So, uh, I don't. I don't. What kind of node do you have? Um, mine is uh, LND. Um, I think I set it up using Pierre's node launcher. So I, I have one. I have a Casa node, and I'm trying to get more channels. I have a problem getting channels. Yeah, I'm not as hardcore of a cheerleader of Lightning as uh, Pierre. I think it's a very great. And stuff, but it's still it's still hobbyist, and I just have other stuff that I'm working on, so it hasn't been my like a main focus. I'm trying to get myself educated on it, and I'm having a really hard. It took me forever to get that thing set up. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it is tricky, and there's still a lot of you know UX uh, design stuff to be worked through. Uh, but I, I do have a node, and I you know I have set up channels, I've sent money, and uh, done all of that. But it's not my it's not my main focus. So I'm trying to find someone who has a casa node because. I can't figure out how you get your address, your lightning address. I can't figure out how to find that. Like it was something I was filling out and I needed to put my lightning address in there and I can't figure it out. Yeah, there should be something uh, that, that reveals, you know, your public key and someone would connect to it yeah. by putting public key at the IP address. Okay, I just have to figure it out. I'm not, obviously it's there and I'm not doing it. So uh, tell me, what do you think is going to be going on? Bitcoin has been on a tear. Uh huh. I mean, you know, I think our bottom... I think it's been met, but I don't know. Who knows? I mean, who knows what's happening? I, I tend to think so. Bitcoin does what it wants to do. So I, I've just noticed a, a such a major shift in the uh, mentality, you know, of people. Just uh, I just had this feeling of like, oh, we're in a bear market because everyone's kind of like down about the price, and now there's just like, there's just positive vibes going all around. So to me, that tells me that like we're kind of moving into something more positive. How long it'll take to, you know, before we see a, a serious bull run is another question, but I certainly think that we've hit the bottom. Well, if you take in 2017, the actual amount of days for it to cover most of that territory wasn't that much time. Yeah, uh, the big time, it was, it was a good two years of kind of just slow, positive buildup that you almost didn't even notice until like one day it was like hitting... A thousand, then two thousand, et cetera, and you're like, wait a second, and you you zoom out and you realize that you've actually been out of the bear market for a long time. It sort of snuck up on us and then accelerated. How was the? Uh, were you? Did you go to consensus? Okay, I was just wondering how the overall thought was there or the impression. Of I, I I heard it was very pro Bitcoin. Uh, surprisingly, I, I think that there was a lot of pro Bitcoin sentiment because I think to some degree people learned their lesson. You know, I don't think completely, but I think people kind of get that Bitcoin's here to stay. Yeah, no, I mean, a bit, bit block boom is the conference I go to. <laughs> right. It's hard to get me to any other conference. Well, like I said, we had a good time. I do know that. So I'm hoping that I can, I, I'm hoping everybody leaves year two feeling just as good as year one. I got a lot of pressure on me, I feel like. Oh, it's, it's going to be fantastic. 
Yeah, I think I think so. We should have more coffee this year. We have a coffee sponsor, <laughs> and Vandrew Jeff Vandrew uh, sponsoring the coffee. So he's a good guy. He's a smart oh, he's, guy. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a jack of all trades. He is, on, a, he is a jack of all trades. I listened to him on some of the show the other day on Marty Bent show. A great interview. Yeah. yeah, people should go listen to that. But Marty Bent is a perfect example. I didn't know Marty Bent or even know his show until he came to Bitblog Boom and I met him. And the same thing for Jeff. And I listen yeah. to Marty's show. He's one of my main shows now that I listen to. It's a fantastic show. Um, yeah, I, I had not met Marty in person, and I didn't even know he was coming. Yeah, uh, he, uh, he just I just get to the me. dinner. I, I get to the dinner. I didn't even totally know what he looked like. And I just like I met I was like talking to some guy and it was it was Marty. I was so excited because, uh, you know, him and I had chatted quite a bit, you know, uh, you know, for quite a while. And I've been a, I, I don't know if he had the show yet at the time. Yeah, he did have the show. He did. have. OK, the show. OK, OK. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he, he, he showed up. It was it was very exciting. Him and uh, his co-hosts are going to do a episode a live episode during uh, the BitBlock boom. That's going to be their speaker session. Matt Odell? Yeah, Matt. Matt has been very helpful to me setting up my node. I think he's probably sick of me messaging him on Twitter, asking him questions. Hey, well, I've got you on here. If you don't know yet, that's fine. I'm just trying to get this all down and get it beyond, get it, uh-huh. get it beyond me. Do you by any chance know what your session is yet? I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. There's there's a, a lot of uh, ideas floating around. Well, as soon as you figure it out, send me the name and like a paragraph, short paragraph description so I can put it on the site and get another one out of the way. I'm starting to pressure people now. I want to get that, I want to get that beyond me. Yeah, don't worry. I, I feel the pressure. I'm trying to think through that. Well, I appreciate you coming on and tell me. So give me on the back on the subject of Bitcoin. What do you think um, we're going to see in the end of 19 and during 2020? I know you're not a future seeker, but how are you feeling? I mean, I, I every day I wake up uh, and I'm more excited about Bitcoin than I was the day before. So uh, that's how I'm feeling. But, uh, you know, I really like there. I don't know if you listened on Stefan Lavera's podcast. He interviewed uh, 100 trillion USD. No, I didn't hear that. Um, so he talked about his model based on stock to flow, you know, safe, what Safedine talks about in the Bitcoin standard. And based on that, he was able to create a model that has an R squared value of something like 95 oh. uh, percent, which is absurd for, you know, a model. Like, that's right. very, very good. And <laughs> that it basically it, it ties the Bitcoin price to the scarcity. And if that model holds up, you know, so there's there's all kinds of reasons why, you know, Austrian economists don't model the market mathematically like this because you can't like the, the future is inherently uncertain. However, if the model does hold up, we we could see you know fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin in twenty twenty one. Uh, well, that based would be around, cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> based based around just like you know it'll be halving next year. Um, right. And so that'll that'll be in, you know, way, way less new Bitcoin supply entering the market. So, you know, if the amount of money flowing into the Bitcoin economy remains the same, then the market cap, you know, uh, necessarily goes up. The liquidity necessarily goes up. So, you know, there's there's potential for some very exciting <laughs> bull run activity in 2020 and 2021. But like I said, you know, the future is uncertain and I'm not going to claim that that'll necessarily happen, but right. it'd be really cool if it did. It would definitely be cool. I saw a thing, I think this morning early when I was just getting up going through some news articles that there's a record amount of wallets now that have 0.1 Bitcoin in them. Yes, uh, Nick Carter had had posted this, a, a graph showing that just the number of unique addresses that have at least 0.1 bitcoins um it just kind of continually goes up that's a great sign yeah i i don't know if there's some kind of like other explanation you know other you know something other than more people stacking sats um someone mentioned something about coin join uh increasing popularity but yeah i i don't know if that's enough to actually you know create that many addresses uh i, I would need to dig deeper but yes i view that as a very positive sign you know the more people we can get stacking sats the better 
Well, let me ask you a couple of questions real here before we end it up. What's your favorite book? Favorite book? Oh, man, that's like an extreme. I mean, you can see all my books behind yes, me. I saw that. Whew. You know, I guess uh, I'll give a, a fiction and a nonfiction. With the nonfiction, it's probably something like uh, Human Action by Ludwig von Mises or Democracy, the God That Failed by Hans Hermann Hoppe, uh, which has both, you know, very much shaped my uh, sort of uh, political economic worldview um, uh, more than anything else, uh, the two of them. Um, and as far as fiction, probably something like uh, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, it's an extremely visceral and violent book that does not leave you. <laughs> okay, I, have not, I haven't read any of those, I'm sorry to say. And your favorite quote? Favorite quote? Oh, man. Oh, I don't even know. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. This is, we aren't trying to catch you here or anything. You know, sometimes when you're throwing this stuff, it's... Uh... You know, I, I, you know, people, I, I have a website, thequotablemises.org. I think that's what it is. You have a website of quotes, is what you're telling me. And you can't, and you can't think of a quote. Oh, well, there's just so many of them. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I mentioned, you know, uh, Mises has been such a, a major influence on me. So, yeah, people can go to thequotablemises.com and read endless, wonderful Mises quotes. And... Uh, I, probably one of those would would rank among my well, top. That sounds like actually, in all reality, if we look at this from the right angle, you may have given more quotes than anyone ever did. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a few on there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how about uh, your favorite crypto resource? Favorite crypto resource. So, uh, I, I will refrain from saying my own. Wow, but I give you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, probably, you know, I, I really like um, uh, Jameson Lops. Uh, Bitcoin page. Okay. So he has it at, at on his website, but it also has a website, uh, a URL that points to it, bitcoin.page. Um, and there's just, you know, everything under the sun uh, just pointing to whatever you want to learn about in Bitcoin, you can find it there. Um, so that's probably the, the top. And what's your favorite? And I know you're going to have a lot of these too, just like your books. What's your favorite podcast? Favorite podcast. Once again, I'll refrain from saying my own. Um, although you are a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I really love uh, Stefan Levera's podcast, Marty Bent's podcast, and I also, you know, I enjoy listening to stuff like Joe Rogan when there's a good guest. Uh, but those are probably the ones I listen to most. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, what is your number one piece of advice for a newbie in the world of Bitcoin? Um, learn more. Hodling is good, and it's good to, uh, you know, you want to stack as many sats as you can, but understanding Bitcoin uh, is what allows you to hodl effectively in the first place. Um, so learn about, you know, why are, why are we in this thing in the first place? Where did this term stacking sats come from, do you know? I think it was Mar uh, Matt O'Dell. That's what I was I think thinking. Was, uh, I, think, uh, yeah. I think it was one of the two there. I mean. Yeah, brilliant, br brilliant meme masters over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the meme masters and pretty much for kind of the node masters, too, from the way Matt's been helping me with mine. But that's good advice for anyone. And listening to that show is still good advice, too. Yeah. Yes. And listening to your show is great advice. Oh, you, thank you. As I said earlier, you do have a show. Hey, where can people follow you at? Um, so the best place to find me online is uh, on Twitter. I'm Bitstein, B-I-T-S-T-E-I-N. Um, as well as the Nakamoto Institute at nakamotoinstitute.org and the uh, Noted Bitcoin podcast, which you can find on you know, iTunes and SoundCloud. And uh, you can also go to the website noted.org. You know, we're actually, we're finishing it today. Um, we're doing the BitBlock Boom podcast. And we're just bringing out, like, we're starting with last year's sessions and just making podcasts out of them to share that information. Oh, excellent. And yeah, so um, this week we'll probably, Safe was the first speaker, so we'll come out with Safe's talk from last year on the BitBlock Moon podcast. And, you know, and last year we had like 10, so after 10 episodes it'll be done you know, yeah, until yeah. this year's done, and we do the same with that. It's good. It's like a podcast mini series. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that should be coming out for anyone interested in finding out what happened last year at BitBlock Boom. Go, you'll be able to go anywhere and find BitBlock Boom podcast. Hey, I appreciate you coming on the show. I really do. And I look forward to seeing you at the uh, dinner. I hope I'm one of the ones that get approved. Um, last year, I had to, like, message Pierre. I never got a response, you know, at all when I filled that. Are you supposed to get a response when you fill it out to begin with? 
Not not right at the beginning. Okay, okay. So I and I feel bad. Like you know, a bunch of people. I get messages a lot. You know, oh, you know what happens with this? It's like so for anyone who's listening. Uh, once we have secured a location, that's when we'll be rolling out uh, emails to people to actually reserve a seat. Okay, because I never got anything that said you have signed up or anything. That's what I the the hey, the the KYC process is very opaque and nerve wracking. No, no, I didn't mean that had so. been approved. That the that the uh, sign up to ask for the approval had been completed. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for that, it is a Google form, so you can technically, you know, have it uh, send you a copy as well, oh. um, so you can know that it goes through. Well, but I should have done yeah. that. I should have done that. Shows how much I know, right? Hey, I appreciate you coming on the show. Before we go, is there anything I might have missed that you wanted to say or promote or anything? No, I mean, I think we covered it. Uh, you know, go to the conference, uh, sign up for as many of the events as you can, um, and, you know, check out my resources. And I hope that they uh, bring value to you and help you learn more about Bitcoin. And keep stacking sats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it, Michael. I hope you enjoyed today's show. A big thank you to all the cousins out there that are showing their support by donating subscribing, and leaving great reviews on iTunes. All of those things help more than you realize. Now, you can subscribe almost anywhere podcasts are available by going to CryptoCousins.com slash subscribe. Call me with your comments or questions at 747-777-9471, or you can email me at thecryptocousins at gmail.com, and I'll try to use these on future episodes. Please take a peek at the 4-Minute Crypto Show, which is produced every weekday and located at 4MinuteCrypto.com. It's the place to get your daily dose of crypto news, and as always, 4 minutes or less. And one last thing, please take a look at my new website, Crypto Crybaby. This website is for the true crypto fan and sells Bitcoin and crypto gear, like t-shirts, caps, and so much more. Take a look at CryptoCrybaby.com today. Thanks again for listening. Love you guys. Thanks for listening to the Crypto Cousins podcast. Please share the show with your friends. They can subscribe by going to CryptoCousins.com slash subscribe. And if you want to know more about Gary, just go to GaryLeland.com. Make sure and join Gary and all the Crypto Cousins every week for a new episode of the Crypto Cousins podcast. The Crypto Cousins podcast and the information included in the podcast are not intended as investment advice. Investing in any cryptocurrency is risky, and you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always seek professional advice before investing in any cryptocurrency. Please understand, you are using any and all information from the Crypto Cousins at your own risk. <laughs>